Welcome, everyone. This is Brainerd Carey, and I'm the director of Praxis Center, as you know, and I want to welcome you all to the talk today, which is on negativity and support for artists. So welcome, everyone. I, I always like to tell all of you here, all the members that are here today and all the members in Praxis Center, I'm, I'm so glad you're, you're members here. I love this community not just because of the learning aspect of it and the exchange, but because of the support of, of the community and that all of you give to one another when you're commenting in each other's posts, congratulating each other or helping each other. It just um, means the world to me. And it's why I love this whole process and this group and, and teaching professional development. So today the subject is negativity and support. And I want to begin by saying today I was at the, the grocery store right this morning i was getting a few things and and as i was checking out the person at the register said to me um something like how are you today and i said I'm, I'm doing pretty good thanks how are you today and he said i'm always enjoying life always enjoying life and i said wow that's that's great to hear um I said, what about when life gets challenging? Do you feel the same way when things are difficult? And he said, yes, I, I always feel the same way because when things get challenging, I just think it's all just a game. It's just a game. And I said, that's an interesting way to think of it as, as a game. And he said, yes, we're all playing Mario Kart. And, you know, for those of you who don't know what Mario Kart is, it's a, it's a Nintendo game. It's a kind of a racing game. And um, what's unique about Mario Kart, and I know about some of these things because I have a son, a teenager, and at one time he was playing a lot of games. Mario Kart is a game that, though it's a racing game, you don't have to be like a gamer or good at playing Mario Kart necessarily to win the game. There's a lot of random things that happen within the game that can knock you right out. So being a beginner, not knowing how to use it, you can still win the game. And again, this was kind of serendipitous. It's not what my talk is entirely on today, but it was a way of, of, of navigating life and of navigating difficulties in, in this one guy's uh, mind, to, to always see it as a game. When things get challenging, see it as, as a game. So I'm going to answer questions, of course, at the end of this, but I wanna talk a little bit about a few other, other ideas about negativity. And initially, this talk came about because uh, an artist wrote to me and said, you know, Brainerd, I'm, 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 I'm now getting shows and I'm having, uh, uh, you know, sales and it's, and it's really exciting. But what's upsetting is the friends of mine who, uh, who have always been around me and, and were in the studio building where I am are less than supportive of me. They said some people, if, if they, don't, they don't respond much, they don't congratulate me, uh, they don't seem happy for me. And the only response I, I get, if I get any, is, oh, how did you get that? How did you do that? And they, she said they're not even asking it in a very nice way. And she said, what do, you, what do you think I should do? And, you know, so this is a situation that happens, right? Sometimes, uh, as, as it may have happened to many of you, as artists achieve success, depending on the group that's around you, it doesn't happen in this particular group because that's what we're all after. But if you're in a shared studio space or others and you want to tell someone, hey, I have a show coming up and I'm excited, this is, and this is the third one you've had in six months, uh, artists can feel jealous. Um, there can be envy. And that's a type of negativity. That's something that isn't supportive. And it's also upsetting, right? She was upset. She wrote to me because she was upset. She felt like, I'm really happy of all this. I'm happy when other friends get shows, um, but I'm upset. Well, you know, there's, there's two sides of that. For one, I understand that artists get upset when other artists have shows. They feel jealous. That's also natural. We've probably all felt that. But being in the position of the person that is having shows and feeling good and and then you have these friends who are not supportive of you you know there's there's a number of ways to handle it and and i'm going to talk about a few things today but one of the ways that you know all the books on on on, on success and, and positivity say is distance yourself from those people 
Um, when someone isn't being supportive, distance yourself from them. Um, you know, I, I, I learned this lesson as a, uh, as a young adult, when when my my parents got divorced, my mother left my father in her um, in her sixties. You know, they were both retired. She was doing very well. She was uh, doing yoga and all kinds of things. Her life was expanding. She was losing weight, and um, my father was less than supportive. Would say, "Well, you know, you don't look like you've lost that much weight to me." Or, and my mother, you know, just just surrounded herself with friends that were supportive. But at one point she made the dramatic decision of saying, I, I don't want to be part of this relationship anymore. It was of course painful for me. It was incredibly painful for my father. All her friends thought in some ways, or some of her friends, their mutual friends thought she was crazy. Why is she leaving her husband? They're retired. They, they're all set up just because he's not supportive of, of all her newfound activities and her excitement for life. Well, you know, that was her choice, you know, and, and it's something I've, I've, I've learned from since. And it plays into this situation, even with the artist a little bit. My mother's feeling was that she was still, still loved him. It wasn't that she didn't love him. It was that she didn't, feel supported by him. And if she wasn't supported by him, she wanted to spread her wings and fly and go somewhere else. And so, you know, that's a pretty personal anecdote, of course, but also um, one that, you know, when I've mentioned it to other friends or, or other, other grandmothers, different people, um, they've said, yeah, I've often felt that, but, but didn't have the nerve to do that. So, you know, this is something that's, that's about separating yourself and it's a difficult decision from friends from loved ones that aren't supporting you depending on how much that bears down on you in the case of the artist that i was talking about she was very upset these were her friends she wanted them to be happy for her she didn't really want to go out and make new friends although that's exactly what she did she's been in touch with me this was only in the past six months she found new friends my mother used to say that she found new friends too. Um, she said, I, I have several mentors and all together they're like one husband. She said, I have someone that, you know, who I work with is writing poetry, someone that goes to concerts with me, someone that teaches me piano. She said, all together, it's almost like one husband that's supportive. Um, so that's one angle on it, right? Separate yourself from those who are being negative and surround yourself with people who are the opposite. You know, in this group, you find that, right? But in, in real life, uh, in your studio practice, in your community, it would mean seeking out those people as well. So for, for my own well-being, what I do is I, I, I'm interested in the stoic philosophers. Uh, Marcus Aurelius is one of them, was considered a philosopher king. Um, there's a few others that were around that time. Marcus Aurelius wrote a book called Meditations, or rather that book was assembled um, from his writings. And all of those writings were largely about how he's dealing with a kind of insane empire. He's a thinker, a philosopher. He's got to deal with all kinds of um, backbiting in Rome and wars and, 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 and treason. And what he was constantly coming back to in the book and Stoic philosophy has, has been on the rise for a while now. And, and so you may have heard some of this before, but what he kept coming back to is don't let other people upset your peace of mind. You know, so he said he'd go into the Senate wherever he's going into. He knew it would be a, you know, basically a horror show, and and people who were trying to manipulate him, manipulate the people around him. And he said, just you know, the idea for him always was to not be taken away from his peace of mind, so he could make a decision that's that was in the best interests of of the country, the city, um, the people. And he said all the time we're being pulled away. So there's a whole, there's a whole, of course, you know, series of, uh, of passages about that in his book, Meditations. But also, a lot of people have written about this, um, and I've written a lot of, I've read a lot of recent interpretations. Ryan Holiday is one writer that writes a lot about it. He um, wrote a book called The Obstacle Is the Way, and in The Obstacle Is the Way, Ryan Holiday, tapping into Stoic philosophy, basically says. 
and he quotes and, and basically, you know, uh, references people throughout history who have run into great obstacles, like huge obstacles that made it impossible for them to achieve what they wanted to achieve. And, and somehow they got over it. And part of the way they got over it in, in, in his estimate, and it's a persuasive argument, is that they use the obstacle to then make it happen. When something is, you know, is in your way, when there's a boulder in your path, make that boulder part of the path somehow. Make it a way to navigate the path. And I could tell more stories about that, but I don't want to spend too much time in it. But essentially, he began writing, Ryan Holiday, book after book on Stoic philosophy as it, as it kind of pertains to your life and as a way to to manage negativity as a way to manage um, obstacles and, and, and severe obstacles, obstacles in health, obstacles financially, obstacles in, in, in every sense that we think of them, to face the obstacle head on. And one of the obstacles he talks about a lot, which the Stoic philosophers talk about a lot, is fear of death, fear of health, fear of all kinds of things. And so, even with that, the philosophy is in using the obstacle as a way, don't avoid thoughts of death, don't avoid thoughts of sickness, embrace it, know that this is human, and think about what you would do knowing that there isn't much time left. And I know you, maybe you've heard some of these things before, but in a, in a stoic sense, in terms of stoic philosophy, it does mean use this fear that you have instead of avoiding the fear of death or avoiding the fear of, of all kinds of other things about health or well-being or finance. Embrace that and know that, you know, rather than worry about that, embrace it. Know that that is a fear, but use it today to move on and, and lead a good life and do the best you can, love the people that are around you, support the people that are around you, make the art you wanna make today. Don't wait till tomorrow. So uh, given that, um, what I do is my personal practice is, Ryan Holiday created a book called the, which I have right here called the, the Daily Stoic uh, Journal. And it's, it's basically a, a blank book with prompts in it. Um, and the prompts often relate to Stoic philosophers. And, and the concept that he used is something that a lot of thinkers, writers, philosophers have used, which is write a little bit in the morning and write a little bit in the evening. You know, talk a little bit about, write, write a short paragraph or so in the morning about some of the challenges for the day. And in the evening, reflect on those challenges. And so I've been doing it with this particular book for about a year, and I find it enormously helpful. So it's it's one other technique, right? In, in this book, it's kind of nice because instead of just writing in your diary, there are prompts every day. Uh, uh, and it all relates, I think, to, to also art making and, and living life. But the prompts, the questions that are asked, you know, is what you write really just a paragraph or two about in the book. And it's very helpful. Um, for example, just the other day, I'm having a discussion with my teenage son about um, some difficult issues. And when I um, wrote about it the next morning and reflected on it the next evening, I, I realized I wanted to handle it in a different way. I wanted to be a different type of person, a different type of father, one that's more even handed, one that's more uh, that has great peace of mind and enormous patience. That helped. I had the same discussion with him the next day, and it was much easier, and we both benefited much more from it. So, so all these things apply to the realm of art, right? Um, there's challenges with learning. There's challenges with galleries. There's challenges with grants and and getting you know acceptance is, as well as rejections from residencies or nonprofits or whatever. All of you are are, are doing in different ways. And so one way to manage it that I'm going to leave you with, besides all the things that I've said today, is getting a book like the Daily Stoic Journals, if you'd like, or just having a blank book and writing a little bit in the morning about the challenges of the day, and then in the evening reflecting on how you manage those, those challenges that day. And it could be anything from calling the gallerist to, to going to a gallery to 
all the aspects that, that, that you're managing in these courses and in this group. And then in the evening, write a little bit about why, um, how, how you manage that, how you feel, a reflection on how you manage those things. So that's, um, that's my talk on negativity and support. And of course, the support aspect, since I've been talking a lot about uh, different, different ways of, of managing your own, um, your own reactions to this, support is critical, right? Um, what I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, um, the very personal anecdote about my mother leaving my father at a very late age was about support. She went somewhere else to get support and she found the support that she wanted. Um, for artists, it's the same thing. You can build a support group by bringing together a few people that you like, people that you may meet at openings, at a cafe once a week. And of course, this group, Praxis Center, and the private um, Facebook forum that you're all in is also a, a place to, to give support, but also ask for it when you need it. Um, support is critical to all of this, to surviving negativity, challenges, um, and, and, and all, the, all the ways we perhaps stop ourselves from having success. So, um, so that's my talk on, on negativity and support. And for all of you here, I want to I thank you again for being here, for being part of this private group, this, this, uh, this center. Your support means the world to everybody in this group and, of course, to me as well. So if you have any questions, I'm going to answer them now. And also, as always, if any of you have suggestions for talks that you want me to do, uh, they almost always happen on Fridays, please let me know and I'll do a talk on your topic. There's already some coming up on workshops and, and a variety of other things. So thank you. Uh, now let's see the questions. Uh, Diane, hi, Deborah. Um, let's see. And uh, Jim, Lisa, Yulia, um, Angelina, um, Marsha, C. Du, Jane. Uh, great to have you all here. Um, so, Jane says a slogan from many years ago when I did S training is what it, what. Whatever you resist, persist. Whatever you resist, persist. I don't know if you guys know about S training. Yeah, it's powerful training. <clears throat> A lot of really interesting things come out of that kind of training. Whatever you resist, persist. I went to um, another training that was uh, another version of S not that many years ago. Um, I forgot what it was called, but their slogan was, um, Find out what you don't know that you don't know, right? That was really interesting. What do you, what, what don't you know that you don't know? <laughs> you know, uh, just like this phrase from Jane, it was a little tricky. When I was there, I remember talking in the group, I was feeling a little bit like, you know, I don't need this kind of thing. And, uh, and everyone's going around talking and, and I began saying, well, you know, for me, I mean, I don't know, this kind of group isn't really that helpful, you know? And um, what I've learned in my life, uh, you know, uh, is, is, is a variety of things about ways of achieving things. So that's my thought, you know? And then someone said in the group, do you realize you just said, I don't know in the middle of your sentence? You said, as far as this group goes, I don't know, but you know, she said, you already said you don't know, and yet you're saying you know. You know, that stopped me. That was fascinating. Right? That's the, that's, that was the idea of what don't you know that you don't know, right? There's something that other, maybe that other people are perceiving. Thanks for that, Jane. Um, let's see. Um, BJ says, thanks, Brandon. I found that um, finding something to be grateful for daily is very helpful. Yeah, I think that's great too. So in your, in your diaries, like I'm saying, I write in the morning, evening, uh, that's another way of doing it. What are you grateful for every morning? Write that down. And then in the evening, a reflection on, on what happened that day. Um, uh, Fred, how did you learn how to speak without gaps and smoothly? 
practice, Fred. I wasn't born this way. And uh, the first lecture I gave, I remember it was when the first book came out, making it in the art world. It was at Rizzoli Bookstore in New York. It was like a dream. You know, I was like, wow, I'm here. They have all these books and there's artists there waiting to, to, to hear whatever I had to say about this book. And I didn't have very much to say. I thought I did. I had prepared remarks. But um, but that was the beginning of, of public speaking. And there certainly is techniques to public speaking. For me, it was, I did many series of talks in a row in New York, and that helped me enormously. So just, just practice, you know, uh, live Facebook videos would do it too, Fred, for sure. Um, uh, um, yes, Deborah says, um, very positive. Hold your head high and don't allow others to see your inner turmoil or doubts. I like that. Are there co-working spaces for artists, preferably free? Juniper asks. That's interesting. Co-working spaces for artists that are preferably free. Residencies are that, um, in, in, in a sense. That's what they are. Uh, many of them are funded. If you go to residencies unlimited, residencies unlimited, um, and you go to a page they have there called Rivet, uh, you'll see that there's uh, you can search residencies. You can search for ones that are funded or not funded. Locally, it's possible to make that yourself, a kind of workspace, collaborative workspace for artists. You could do it in a cafe even, a discussion space where you meet up with people. Um, otherwise, sometimes that takes place in studio buildings, like in Jersey City, there's something called MANA. That's really, uh, it's paid though, everyone rents a studio. And it's not really co-working space the way entrepreneurs do or everybody has a desk and they're all encouraging one another. Residencies are really more like that. Um, hey, Bill. Hey, Lisa. Uh, I get negative about my art career because it seems to take me so much longer to finish a painting than other artists. So it seems like I'm always playing catch up to obtain more success. Yeah, I understand that. You know, there's... Um, there's a challenge to work that takes a while. I mean, that's that's uh, that's real, and that is a challenge. It's uh, it's patience. Just be patient. There are many artists that take a long time to produce canvases, and I don't think it's a catch-up process. There's different ways of working. Some major artists only produce six, seven canvases a year. Other major artists produce hundreds of work, a, you know, pieces of work a year. So there. One isn't better than the other. They're, they're two distinct ways of working and both are valid. Both uh, can achieve success in the art world. Um, yes, I agree, Juniper. Uh, Doreen, thank you for sharing uh, your personal story. I'm going through something similar to what your mother experienced. I've never received support uh, for my art making. The situation is difficult to extricate myself from. But in the meantime, I am self-supporting and holding compassion for myself and going for the dreams of being an artist that I have always been and being seen for it and being here with all of you is helping enormously to be who I am. Well, Doreen, that's very powerful. That's very, that's very moving. Um, and yes, we're here for you. We are here for you. Absolutely. Um, it's one way to manage it. Everybody has different decisions to make and there's no, there's no easy way out of, out of, um, any one particular situation, but I'm, I'm glad that the story I told, which I hesitated to tell because it was so, so personal. Um, I'm glad that helped. And, um, and I'm so glad that you're enjoying the support of the group. That's, that's, that's why, that's why I'm here. And that's why, um, all of us are here. Uh, you're welcome, Fred. Um, uh, yeah, and I agree with Marsha. They say, yeah, try not to compare. Um, Toastmasters is also great resources for practicing speaking in public. Great, great notion. Uh, BJ, Fred, Toastmasters is a, is a, um, is a way of, of learning how to speak in public. Uh, okay, take your time. Don't compare trying to enjoy the process. Well, great. So even in this thread, everybody's kind of um, supporting one another. So, so I want to thank you all again. From the bottom of my heart, honestly, this, this, this group is, um, is wonderful. You guys are not only achieving great things, but the support from this private group, as well as all the learning and success stories you've done is, is just fantastic. It's again, why I love doing this and, 
And um, so lots of love to all of you guys. I enormously appreciate your, your, your contributions to the group, the way you talk to one another. Um, thank you for that. Thank you for being the supportive, um, wonderful, generous artist that you are. And also, just as a PS, remember, if you have um, suggestions for talks that you'd like me to do, please post them in this thread or separately, just as a post on, on the, in the group. And, um, and I'll respond and get to them if I can, or hire an expert to do them if, um, if I'm not qualified to speak on them. So thank you all. I wanna wish you um, a wonderful, wonderful day or evening, wherever you are, wherever you're listening to this. And if you're listening to this after it's aired, um, that's fine. You can um, still comment and you can still uh, post a, um, a topic that you'd like me to discuss.